You are listening to the Body Charge podcast, and I'm your host, Sandy Sanderson. Welcome to the Body Charge podcast. Today's topic is why do challenges make us stronger? And I have with me an amazing guest, Daniela Malozzi. So challenges are an integral part of our human existence. (laughs) A human existence on this planet. Life seems to run cycles of challenges where there is a kind of rhythmic ebb and flow. We exert ourselves to meet the challenges, to climb the mountains, and then we need to rest a while to recover, ready for the next lot. So, Daniela, you you call yourself the happiness queen, but I'd call you also the queen of challenges because you're a muscle yes. corrective therapist. I'm a okay. health specialist and I specialize in the mind body connection. And that's a really good lead to start with. Why yes. don't I do hypnotherapy anymore? Because I want people to take their own innate power without feeling like they are being zapped into a state of mind thinking. I want them to empower their own minds with their own level of conscious and unconscious interaction. So I do not do hypnotherapy anymore. I give people different tools now. Which is why we probably should be all meditating because that's where we can keep control. We're in charge. We don't give our power to somebody else to drive that vehicle, right? And maybe the batteries have stopped working in our own remote controls and the remote controls give us access to our mind and our body. So maybe we do need to go to a therapist or a specialist for a moment for them to just put the batteries back in or give them a shake and then off we go. We're back. And meditation. week. Yeah, a little tweak. Yeah, I find it helpful sometimes to have a coach. So when you've embarked on um, some kind of self-improvement journey and usually comes from, you know, some trauma, some stress, something didn't go right in life and it it shocks you out of your illusion or delusion into back into the reality zone and you have to recalibrate. And But if you don't know where to start, then you look to what others have done, where others have walked the path successfully and discovered how to move out into a better place um, from disorder to order to getting life back into control where you enjoy the journey, right? Chaos to calm, yes. My model of of work is four to six sessions, and there's a reason for that. That doesn't mean after six sessions I say, off you go, I don't want to ever see you again. But I believe that the human body and through my research and study, extensive study of healing is how quickly the body can heal when given the right environment. So four to six sessions for my muscle work allows me to get into the tendon element of the muscles, which is where the the muscles, uh, the muscle memory lays. So it takes about three sessions to start to allow the body to let go of a pattern. Because when you've been doing something for so long, the body thinks that you want to carry on doing it. It doesn't discriminate or discern whether it's positive or negative. So it can take it just two or three sessions to actually change that muscle memory. And then another two or three sessions to stabilize it. Now that's interesting because that's about a two to three month period and neuron neuroscience shows us it takes around 28 days to create or break a neuron. So that kind of gives you an understanding, but it doesn't take that long doesn't take two to five years or these 20 year chronic conditions and illnesses we see these poor souls battling with so i believe that as a therapist four to six sessions followed by maintenance as and when you need it now obviously sandy people like you and me we want to keep our due diligence high and we want to keep our consciousness high so we might want to do a month a a maintenance session once a month that keeps us in check, keeps us accountable, keeps somebody in our corner and helps us to see those blind spots. And the best coaches have the best coaches. So absolutely, maintenance is important. But I really subscribe to fast healing. Not shortcuts, but fast healing because that is what the body does. You cut your finger and it does not take two to five years for it to heal. So I want to find those cheat codes, which I've been learning for years and years and years. How do we get the body back to homeostasis when it's being pulled apart by government, viruses, family deaths, illness, loneliness, stress, of course. And of course, magnesium is the number one mineral to allow for a beautiful, I imagine magnesium is like the the kayak. You know, this life is a current full of different roads and the magnesium is just the current that constantly keeps us going. Yes, we supply a lot of magnesium, electromagnesium to um, 
body practitioners, massage clinics, chiropractors, physios, because it's very difficult to work uh, on, on a particular therapy if the muscles are like tight and really, you know, squeezed. lock. Yes, yes. So, so even psychologists, we are uh, realizing now that the body needs to relax before you can work on the mind, because there's a very, very tight relationship between um, behaviors and between muscles. Muscles have memory. Uh, everything is so connected. When we feel tight in the muscles, we also feel grumpy. So it does directly affect our behaviors, and vice versa. It's a, it's a, it's a two way two way swinging door. I think. Uh, so if you Andy, can... that's really interesting. Yeah. When people are trying to open up. <clears throat> I find that they open up almost instantly the second I put my hands on them when they're on the table. When they're on the table and I start with the muscles or the magnesium. But if I try to do coaching first, they clam up. They yeah. close down. They can be a little bit reactive or resistant. So I've learned over the years, get them on the table first, relax the muscles, revive the muscles, lengthen them, and then we can have a chat because they're most likely, like you say, to be more open and yes, capable and that's... able so interesting because you know what's happening there is you're um connecting with an electrical field so your electrical field when you touch someone is connecting with another person's electrical field uh which is a body circuit and you're somehow um melding or blending and helping to stabilize that electrical circuit um and you know people can get their electrical circuit stuck and usually it's stuck at certain junction points i think you you'd be familiar with those with the muscle fascia when things uh, get stuck uh, or energy is impeded such as uh, even acupuncture points or meridians you know the acupuncturists use those points they put a little needle in <coughs> and they reconnect that electrical circuit so it starts to flow it delivers energy to the cells and the different organs and if we if we have those energy centers blocked, <clears throat> or stuck, usually from trauma and stress, then it affects how our organs work, and that affects how the brain works, it affects our behaviors, and it's so everything is like interrelated into a web. And so what what I'd like to talk about is how challenges can make us stronger, because you know we can get into a comfort zone, we can get into a too easy space where we're, we're not um, stretching ourselves enough and we can get bored, we can get disinterested, we can get into a rut or a slump. Uh, and that, and that is, it's when things get blocked um, as well. And I noticed that you have learned to clean out some cobwebs when things get a bit stuck. You've be become famous for doing the Wim Hof style ice baths, which is a big challenge, yeah. a massive challenge. Tell us about how, um, how, wh what it does for you. What are the benefits that you experience from that? I love this question because on, on TikTok, I, I put a video up and I had so many people right underneath in the comments, why? And it was in every language, Kosafai, Tamai, like all these different things. And I, I, tried, I Googled some of them. They were all saying the same thing. Why? Why? Um, Look, I, I want to say that, that I've got a really good saying. I'm, I'm, I'm about to, oh, let's not swear. The stuff gets stuck in the sheath. Oh, if it wasn't a family show, it would have been a different one. Oh, you mean the shit but, gets stuck in the sheath. <laughs> the shit, oh, we're allowed to swear. We're, on, we're not on live television, it's fine. The shit gets stuck in the sheath. So as the beautiful, many, many you know people, Tony Robbins was actually the first person in my early 20s to say this. Um, he explained that in order to shake up our trauma, sometimes we have to shake up the body to move the trauma from the stuckness. And I didn't quite get that <clears throat> in my early 20s, but when I started to research the nerves and the nervous disposition within the body, I realized that the saying, somebody getting on your nerves, is very literal. When somebody causes you a trauma, it can literally shock your body into a static state, just like when you walk into a house or you walk into a room and you get that really eerie feeling that something quite dark has happened or something quite uncomfortable, just like when you walk in after an argument, you can feel it, it's palpable. Well, the body holds that same energy inside of our myelin sheath, which is the casing for our nerves. So what I love, I mean, I, I've never loved the cold. I, I still don't. I just love the interaction with it now. 
But for me, it was more of an opportunity to shake up my body and show my ego who's boss. And then it went from that sort of torturous, well, we can show this body, we can show this brain, we can step into an, a stressful situation voluntarily so that any other time a stressful situation is put on me, I'll be more equipped to deal with it. But Sandy, it quickly shifted within about a year and a half <clears throat> from a cold shock to a cold journey. And I feel like the journey has shifted my body into a higher state of living. I feel like I'm, I can do more push-ups, more press-ups, more handstands. I seem to recover quicker from some of my exercise workouts. I'm sleeping better, more quality sleep. I have a more improved diet. I feel like it's had a massive knock-on effect. So for me, putting myself out of my comfort zone every day keeps me growing, it keeps me building, and it keeps me from getting stagnant. And it also strengthens my spirit, my soul, and my body. So yes, why the would you not want to do that every day? Yeah, it sounds fantastic. The, the researchers looking into this phenomenon have found that the brain releases a huge amount of endorphins. So there are feel-good chemicals. They suppress pain. They, they give you an, an, a feeling of elation, a dopamine release. So, so it's the best drug because your body is producing it itself. It's endogenous and it comes from being Absolutely. stimulated. Yes, it comes from being stimulated and stretched and challenged you're, you're with the cold and then um, recovering from that cold. It, it shocks the, the, hypoth the hypothalamus, the thyroid, the whole um, endocrine system gets, gets a shake up and that causes energy to move you bring in more oxygen into the system so therefore life the life force itself is stimulated from being stretched and challenged like that so I don't do the ice baths but I do swim in my icy cold pool in the winter time <laughs> first thing in the morning yes your pool and my is mom, awesome yeah, my mind says pool. oh you know it's going to be cold oh, the goosebumps are starting but but then you have to get into that zone don't you go that's just a conjuring up of fear it's not going to be bad so I, then my my higher self has to step in and convince my little ego child it'll be fine just do it so that's I jump in and do you, do you know what after the first lap it's all good I go okay I can see the goal another one yeah. and another one and before I know it I'm at the end and I'm going I'm out and I'm going oh gee that feels good now it's over <laughs> you got it but like, uh, I call but that it... the chemical cocktail it's a chemical yeah. cocktail and I have thousands of clients who have asked me these same questions about you know how can you do it why do you do it and I said listen if you want to burn calories that are not necessary in your body if you want to keep your body at a homeostatic level and you want to master your mind's limitations and feel stronger and more connected to yourself there are lots of little challenges you can do you don't have to plunge yourself into ice water but the biggest one that I've actually found that my clients love, and this is really easy to do. It's easy. Everyone can do it at home. And it seems to be the start of some kind of an awakening or a strengthening of people's spirit. So here we go. Every day when you have a hot shower, let's just go seven day trial. Have yourself a hot shower. Take a few deep breaths, deep, deep breaths in through the nose. Keep it low in the ribs and slow. On your third breath in, Turn off the heat, blow out really slowly as if it's a straw. And as you're blowing out of your mouth, you turn off the heat and you withstand the cold. And you stay in the cold until that breath is done. And it's only a few seconds. And if you're brave enough, you take another breath and you do it again. So what we're doing is we're just creating a rhythm through the exhalation, which triggers the vagus nerve, which I was telling my cousin yesterday, um, she was having a bit of a stressful day. And I said to her, darling, do these breaths. These breaths will give you a feeling of home. And I, I feel like it's a sense of safety. It's like a little warm wheel that starts brewing in your chest. That same feeling when you got out of the pool, Sandy, when you got out of the freezing cold pool, how did you feel the contrast of the cold to normal, normal again? How oh, did that like feeling feel? Super alive, like really in my body and um, happy. Super happy, like and the rest emotionally of the day? high. Very good, very productive. I I work better, more efficiently. Um, I I don't um, 
yeah, I don't, I don't need, I don't know. You don't let the heavier thoughts sink you down. Yeah. It's almost like you start the day, if you start the day with a lightness in your heart and your spirit, it takes quite a lot to dampen you down. But if you start the day heavy, tired, thinking about yesterday, tax increases, yada, 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 you've started the day off with a heaviness. And then it's more likely that all it takes is a feather to fall on you and you could fall. So I say, challenge yourself first thing in the morning. It might be waking up a little bit earlier. It might be not having the second coffee. You know, each of us will have our levels. Challenge yourself a little bit each day. Or Challenges. A strength. Yes. So those endorphins that are released as a result of the challenges are um, super happy chemicals. They, they give us a feeling of elation, of being alive, of being happy to be alive. I, I notice joyful. when joyful. So I probably don't go swimming if it's blowing a gale and super rainy and horrible outside. <laughs> I do draw you the You do the hot shower, cold shower then. Hot, cold I shower, do, that's your alternative. I can do. But, but if I haven't done that, I must admit, I, I have to struggle a little bit more through the day. I don't quite get as much done and I get to a slump where I have to get up, I have to have a cup of tea, I have to, you know, do something else. Um, I'm pushing harder I feel like my body is pushing harder whereas when I have that really good start to the day I've released those endorphins in my body I feel there's more effortlessness to the rest of my day it's clearer there's not so much there's no brain fog um, it's it's just such a better experience for the rest of the day and so these challenges I think are really important for people to remember we shouldn't be afraid of them we shouldn't run away from them a, a whole society, I think, is predicated on a little bit of now more nanny state mentality of you've got to avoid this and you've got to cushion people here and cushion people there. And I say, well, why so many cushions? Because, you know, you die faster with too many cushions because you're not stretched. You know, uh, p p older people I've talked to, when I say, what is the secret to your health and longevity? The first thing they say is hard work. I worked hard all of my life. I worked hard. And I go, well, you know, unless they've had accidents or they've done something to that they haven't been able to recover from, the hard work with a caveat of good recovery, and that's always the case, isn't it? It's not so much the stress you put your body on muscles under, but it's how well you recover from it. Do you get enough rest, nutrition, magnesium uh, for your body then to come back on top, to rebuild and repair itself, <clears throat> to get rid of the toxins and waste during that rest and recovery phase. Uh, and so I just want to ask you also about the <clears throat> muscles. What happens when we, we push our muscles, we start to work a bit harder and we get sore muscles? And in that recovery phase, what is happening to the muscle and why then does it build a stronger muscle? Actin and myosin are wonderful filaments that slide and glide, constantly moving like this. So whenever you are doing exercises or you're moving your body just in general, you have this constant delicious interaction. It's like a dance between your, your, your filaments of the muscles. And I imagine the muscles are like hair. So you can imagine the hair is just weaving in and out, a bit like the um, uh, anemona, anemone in uh, Finding Nemo. But imagine now... <clears throat> What does that need to slide and glide? It needs moisture. If it doesn't have enough moisture, we can get stuck. The filaments can get stuck. Then when they're stuck, they may not necessarily be able to repair or move as efficiently. There's any so collagen and elastin. And collagen, gelatin. elastin, which is what they produce. And water, sipping water. I mean, mm. fascia is made up of collagen, vitamin C and water. So don't and, you think that we need to have as much of that? And, and magnesium, of course. But magnesium the electrolytes. is in everything. There's the electrolytes yes. in the water. So, mm. so we actually need to understand that that rip and repair that happens is the way the muscles get stronger and bigger. So we're putting the muscles under stress, under pressure. During that time, they expand, they extend, the muscles strengthen. And as they're doing that, they need, <clears throat> it's a bit like how can you get bigger or better if you don't have any food in your body? Imagine you didn't eat and you were trying to do muscle work. You wouldn't have anything to build the muscle on. So the muscle gets bigger with the good foods and nutrients that allow it to grow. It gets stronger and maintains a healthy movement with regular consistency of water. 
And some people say, yeah, I scull a couple of glasses in the morning and then I scull a couple. And that's better than not having any at all. But actually, studies have shown that sipping water just throughout the day just allows a bit more of a, an efficient um, utilage. Um, do you know the, the, the water is best absorbed with certain things in it like Celtic salt and magnesium because mm. it has this wonderful way of opening up those cells to catch the water and absorb so that you don't lose most of it and pee quite a lot. A lot first thing people say to me when they increase water is, I kept going to the bathroom. I kept going to the bathroom. So that's two things. One, your body could be adjusting, but two, you could actually be having malabsorption. So there's certain things you can or do detox. a little sprinkle of or yeah, they, they some... or some people have like a weaker kidney so, and that causes them to lose more electrolytes in the urine and so those people will need a, to put a lot more back because they're not recycling their electrolytes like magnesium enough um, and when we lose yeah. magnesium um, we can't hold the water in as the cell loses too much magnesium from excessive stress uh, in the urine the cells also lose extra water and tend to dehydrate. And that's when the squeezing effect comes, the cramping or the tightness in the muscle. And as we drink more water with magnesium in it, the cells suck up more of the water and inflate more like a rubber tire inflating. And they're also able to push out more waste faster. So I think that's probably how their lactic acid is more quickly dissipated. Those are waste products from metabolism uh, they cause some pain for a while. And as we rest and recover with lots of m more hydration and electrolytes, um, the muscles can recover and they build back stronger, for want of a better phrase, <laughs> because, because the body recognizes, oh, that those muscles um, are, are under extra stress and duress. We have to build them up more. So it sends extra resources to rebuild to strengthen up the fort so we when we train right we we're training because we want to build we want to tighten we want to build better muscle burn up the fat um and um have a better system that that uh transmits the electrical flow the life force in the body which goes through the muscles and the muscles tend to have the muscle cells have more <coughs> water and more hydration than other cells in the body because of that electrical transference, that electrical movement and flow goes through the muscle fascia. And so, yes, as you said, without the water and the electrolytes, it's going to get stuck and dry. And that's aging really, isn't it? We get old and hard and crunchy fast. Well, look, <laughs> I love, I love Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza's statement, all aging is a product of poor protein production. You know, why is it that some people have lots of limes? Why is it that you know, some people have broken faces or, you know, they, their faces seem like they've really weathered a storm and yet they're younger than other people. You could say it's genetic disposition. You could say it's stress. You could say it's a combination. But, you know, if we actually look at that statement, all aging is a product of poor protein production. And we understand that so many of the organs produce protein, require protein, need protein, use protein, love protein. We talk about protein a lot because it's important. It, it has such an, a vital yes. function in our and body. You know, I've asked all the people I've asked, the, ha the healthiest people that I've met, the most consistent healthy people that I've met, I asked them, give me a sec give me a secret. And they all say 20 minutes movement a day. Very simple, isn't it? It's not much. And different. Keep it varied. So these are not people that go to the gym every single day. They're not people that just walk or just play tennis. These are people that have a varied lifestyle. They're moving their joints through their full range of motion. So I try to get my clients even to just put their, the joint through a circle movement. One circular mm -hmm. movement is going to slow down your aging, the no circular movement. Oh, what about yoga? Becomes... Yeah, yoga would be good, wouldn't well, it? Because you're stretching... But yes, but interestingly, some people may need more weights than yoga at different times, right? So I'm very hypermobile. So I don't benefit largely from yoga as much as I do from weights most of the time. If I did yoga all the time, it doesn't do much for me. If I do just weights all the time, it's too much on my body. So I have to have a little bit of both, but I yeah. seem to benefit more muscularly. Like a very diet. weights. <laughs> 
very diet. But other people will benefit more from yoga because they're very tight. So one of the tests I do is a test, um, a stretch test to see how bendy and how pliable somebody is. Because depending on how stuck their body is, we may have to encourage them to do a lot more yoga. Or if they're very hypermobile, we want to cause more resistance so that their bones and their joints become stronger. Because we don't have to get old. We do have to age, but we certainly don't have to get old. No. And a varied diet and a varied lifestyle, movement 20 minutes a day, making the heart pump and causing the muscles some kind of work will yeah. keep the body young. Back to your people about hard work, eh? We want to keep our muscles working hard, but smart. Yes, yes. I think um, in generations gone past, they, they got a lot of exercise from physical work in the, in the garden, you know, they had to walk um, more often. They didn't have cars like they they have today. Um, there was a lot more need to be physical. Um, and when you see yeah. old films, the most of the people um, are not, you know, overweight. They're like thin uh, compared to today. <clears throat> so it's yeah, good point. Quite amazing. Um, what a difference just lifestyle makes, um, and and challenges. So. In our urban environments, particularly, I think this could be a problem. People have sedentary lifestyles. They're, they're, you know, working in offices at computers all day long. And, you know, the computers um, emit a lot of positive ions, which are the opposite to what we need to be energized. We get energized from negative ions, like when you stand next to a waterfall. There's lots of water and magnesium in the atmosphere in, um, that you breathe in and you feel invigorated. Um, their negative charges uh, and also grounding when you go out into the onto the earth onto the grass rocks um, dirt stone all of these elements um, help um, transfer the earth's electromagnetic field charge to your body to um, equalize to to get rid of the positive charge that we build up in offices there's a big movement now called grounding or earthing um, which I think find quite interesting because it plays right into the idea that we are electrical beings and we need to understand <clears throat> our physical nature, which is, you know, intertwined with our spiritual nature. Everything is, you know, mind, body, spirit is one really, uh, and one affects the other. So we, so we feel so much better when we have that grounding, get rid of that positive charge. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I went and bought myself a red light looks a bit dodgy um, by my window late at night, a big, beautiful red light, which is um, the infrared. And I use that just on my face. I use that on my on my skin where I've got maybe some little scars or areas of my skin I would like to um, strengthen, the, the elastin of the skin, <clears throat> because the sun has three colors, red, yellow, and blue. And the yellow and blue, we don't want because that stimulates the cortisol. We don't want to simulate naturally. But the red light creates this really soothing, calming effect, which is why these infrared saunas are going mm. off. And it lightens, tightens, and brightens your skin. But you can literally get those experiences and those feelings. You can get them synthetically, but just stand outside. Just touch a tree. Yeah. And the sun is it. free. The sun, the is, sun free. is free. Exactly. <laughs> People, everyone feels it when they get out of the ocean. Everyone feels this freshness, this divine deliciousness. It's It's nature. And so we want to constantly balance. I think the word, the key word for me is balance. How do we constantly bring the body back to balance? Because you might have the staff party where you have a few drinks. You might have the beautiful grandmother that passed away that you were very close to. Life is going to happen around you. Circumstances do not matter. Only your state of being matters. So how do we keep your being in the most um, fundamentally healthy, happy state? And let's think about it easily. What, what do we have access to that's free, cheap, and always available to us? Nature. So I say to my clients, do you want to save some money and have even more of a session today? Go for a walk for 20 minutes before you come and see me. Go to the beach. Put your feet in the ocean if you can. If it's winter, go and touch some leaves. Just stroke your hand over some leaves. It sounds so funny, doesn't it? But even just the touching of them and the smelling, like you say, is in the air. It negates all those positive, horrible ickiness yeah. um, vibe eons that we get from the technology all the senses and that's, are if you don't involved. have the sessions yeah. all the senses are involved go for a walk 20 minutes a day yeah. and that will be your and recharge recharge 
and talk nicely to yourself. Thoughts have energy. Thoughts yeah. create vibrational states. We are living tissues. That's been measured. Your thoughts have interaction with your body. So even just thinking thoughts of health and happiness and joy and I am good enough, I am enough. Of course you're good enough. Who are you comparing yourself to? Of course you're good enough. You're here. So start having better thoughts. You'll start feeling better and everything can move better. Just like when you get a bad diagnosis. Imagine someone says to you, oh my gosh, Sandy, this is the worst plantar fasciitis I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, Sandy, you could have you could have a serious condition. Even just that thought alone could put your body into a spiral of stress. Stress creates um, absolute interaction with your immunoglobulins. They drop your antibodies for a, a good few days. So your quickest access to health and happiness is your thoughts. And we have yes. 60 to 80,000 of them a day. Think our worst enemy, thoughts. I think our worst enemy is the fear. And around us on the media, where as soon as you turn the TV on, I call it the bad news. That's what's on the bad news this morning. <laughs> I love like you. I call it the show. I get the popcorn and I go, I wonder what's on the show today. What are they trying to make us feel today? Yep, yeah, fear. Okay, yep, bit of darkness, bit of scared um, energy I, for the future. Brilliant. I think when you're in touch with your real self and you can come back to that center and you can meditate and you can get a better intuitive feeling of what's real, you look at information coming. If it's fake, you know it straight away. You go, ah. How do you know it, Sandy? How? You, How you, do we know it? you you well it's practice isn't it it's practice of knowing the difference between real and not real and you notice that difference when you come back to your center because that's your real experience when you're meditating and you're focusing on what's going on in your body you're really experiencing that it's not an illusion it's 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 all your senses coming together and you're consciously tapping in and recognizing oh that's me that's my my skin tickles over here or my muscle moved over there and the breath coming in and out of my nose, you're focusing on what's real, then then that's your compass in a, in a sense. Yeah. And when, when someone else says to you, well, there's a war over here and there's, you know, it's good to know what's going on, uh, but to detach from it and not to take things on on an emotional level because you can't do yeah. anything about it. Beautiful. Focus on what you Just can. Just like when I call my nonna. Do I call my nonna. I say, nonna, how are you? She's 91. She goes, oh, still alive. And I said, well, that's a good start. It's a good start. Yeah. And I said, um, how, how's things going? And she goes, terrible, terrible. I said, what's happened? Are you okay? She's like, yeah, people are dying, Daniela. Everybody's dying. They do nothing about it. And I'm like, where are you getting this information from? The news. <laughs> Turn it off. Turn it off. God love her, God love her. But you're right, when you meditate, and I don't feel like I need to meditate every day now. I did it for about four years, and it doesn't feel like something I have to do every day. Do I still do it? Yes, at times, yes, absolutely, because I want to continually advance my consciousness level, and I'm humble, and I want to connect to my inner team, my inner world. But do I have to do it every day? No. Why? Because it's a practice. I did it so often mm. and so frequently that I became so comfortable with the internal dialogue the internal compass system within me i call it the bullshit meter yes i called bullshit on my own ego for years yeah. by meditating yeah. Yeah. meditation you cannot escape your ego you cannot um, ex escape the mind once you come to terms with your own mind and your own inner being which can be very shocking i know meditation can be very very confronting but guess what so can life so if you can learn to confront yourself you can allow yourself to be a lot less impacted and like you say sandy to detach detachment is the root of all happiness yeah i think <laughs> i think as you practice that meditation you get faster at it i found my find myself sometimes if i'm in the car as a passenger just um five or ten minutes Dropping my mind yes. wanders and, I, and it is a meditative zen kind of mm. state and it just passes mm. in and out when you have like a little space in between, you know, just having a cup of tea and there, there's just that little space. Your body just starts to do it naturally once you've learned the, the formal techniques. And then it becomes just part of everything that you do every day. So more being more. Well, think about method. how many times we go to the bathroom so many times a day. What if I say to my clients, every time you go to the bathroom, can you do three shoulder rolls back? 
shoulder rolls for sometimes it's the shoulder rolls sometimes it's can you just say something nice to yourself every time you go to the bathroom and how about we add in the meditation can you just be completely present in the moment vacuum away the thoughts that's my favorite um, one to release thoughts just imagine a little dyson hoover right there and it just vacuum vacuums them out so that you bring your attention back down to your breath and it's like a muscle. Yeah. The more you do it, the, the more faster you drop in. When that person cuts me up on the road and I catch myself from beeping or getting angry, I say, well done. It's like an instant. I, I still have the moment where I want to react, but then I pull myself back. I stop and I catch myself. Catching yourself seems to get quicker and quicker the more it you does. work that muscle. It does. I think we need to bring this to a close, although I could probably speak with okay. you for hours because it's so interesting. Love it. Yes, you're I so know. interesting i love the way you put the technology and the information and all the the, the, the bittiness in between everything oh, thank does you it I work it. yeah i i like to dig a little yeah. bit deeper it's fun it's fun and that's the whole point um uh everything that you do there should be an element of fun and discovery and curiosity yes, and life you... is supposed to be fun yes, yes and... i hope you like this conversation and will share it with others let me know what you thought about it in the comments below if you want to listen to other Body Charge conversations, click like, subscribe, the bell icon and click all notifications. Subscribe to our newsletter to get updates on blogs, podcasts, videos and magnesium special offers at electromagnesium.com.au. Relax, recharge and recover.